This is the Final Whistle Podcast with the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score, Woking 2, Wrexham 2, and frankly, with a dispiriting affair, in all honesty, frustrating. Uh, not because of what happened in the lead-up of Dean Keats leaving, uh, but because performance levels didn't dip and this was a massive, massive missed opportunity. I felt beforehand that the big question for the players in terms of Keats leaving so suddenly was whether their heads would drop, whether the shock might affect the performance levels, might, might affect their drive, and in that respect it was good news because the answer undoubtedly was no side performed well, battled very well and ought to have won. What was frustrating about it was that, frankly, Woking looked poor. They are in massively relegation form, and it shows uh, they were there for the beating. Wrexham was sloppy, letting two set-piece goals they shouldn't have done. The first one uh, set them back, but they came back, took the lead, took a grip of the game, and then the last 15 minutes lost that grip. The second sloppy set-piece goal, really annoying. Really annoying from Wrexham's perspective. And I, I feel especially because of the other results. You could argue Wrexham were fortunate because <laughs> all the teams around them dropped points. I'm inclined to say they were around. This was a massive missed opportunity. With other sides dropping points, Wrexham should have closed out a victory here and didn't. And they'll be so frustrated. They suffered a problem early on because Manny Smith, who travelled down, wasn't fit enough to actually feature in the match. But having said that, David Raven stood in and had a good game in the centre of defence. And Kamal Carrington, as you'll hear later on, Paul, my co-commentator on Carl FM, names as man of the match at left-back. So we can hardly point a finger at the players who are filling in uh, and blame the result on that. Wrexham started brightly enough. And within the fifth minute, I had the first meaningful effort on goal. Devedick swinging in across, ricocheted around six yards out. And when it finally came out to Wedgbury, he struck the ball cleanly from 25 yards out, but just wide at the right post. Dev and Wedgbury was, was massive throughout, and especially throughout the first hour, and perhaps I'd say, really hoovering up, battling and attacking the ball and, and doing ever so well. Quigley and Holroyd looked dangerous as well. They looked to have the beating of the, the walking central defenders. One quick break, set up Quigley. Holroyd made a great run. Quigley's pass two strong it wasn't the trickiest of through balls and if he got it right he would have sent Holroyd completely clear on the keeper down the middle but it didn't happen and Wrexham were then punished in the 12th minute when Woking against Dunham of Play took the lead they had a breakaway which ended in Greg Cox having a shot as he was off balance which went well over the bar referee gave a corner Wrexham disputed that I've seen the video replay inconclusive to be honest with you the corner was swung over from the right hand side left footed by Ralph towards the edge of the six yard box Chris Dunn was penned in by players and didn't have scope to come and attack it and the central defender Josh Staunton despite the fact that he was having to stretch and stoop for it was still able to put his header inside the left post to give Woking a shock lead but Wrexham responded well and immediately they were creating opportunities again in fact four minutes later they would have been level but for an astonishing to say by Nathan Baxter the first in the string of good stops by the, the keeper Wedgbury again 25 yards out driving in a shot it took a deflection around the penalty spot by this point Baxter was really lunging to his right the deflection took it central in the goal somehow the keeper managed to stick his left hand up and get a hand to it and enough strength on it to push it clear remarkable save and wrecks him massively massively frustrated but they kept hauling it back, kept making chances, end-to-end uh, -end stuff, saw chances at both ends, a, a long sustained spell of pressure by Rex and Mending of Devedix on the edge of the area, maybe should have took the shot on first time, he took a touch and that allowed the defenders to get close enough to make an extra block when the shot came in, they broke up the other end, did Woking and the ball in the end was uh, on the edge of the area, Theophanus having a shot which was blocked, and then Wrexham broke straight back down the other end, quickly on the left-hand side, dribbling in, beating his man from a very, very tight angle, hitting a shot which went wide. A chance for walking from a 30-yard free kick, Banton getting it over the wall well, but Dunn had plenty of time to see it and dive to his right and catch it, before in the 33rd minute came the equaliser which Wrexham deserved. Although admittedly it came in odd circumstances, Rutherford picking the ball up on the right, swinging it into the near post, and there was Staunton who gave walking the lead to rather wildly swing at it and deflect it beyond his own keeper. Scored for both sides within 33 minutes of the start of the match. 
quite an eventful day. But Wrexham, the first half, was characterised by long spells where they penned walking in where they dominated possession in the walking half, and where they swung balls into the box, which walking's defence frankly looked as stretched and edgy as they cleared. Despite that, and despite a very strong end to the half, in the last moments of added time, Woking could have taken the lead again. Theophilus is a, a big target man who actually caused problems for Wrexham and, and, and beat Pearson a couple of times in the box. And although he's got a lot of goals at lower levels, he hasn't been prolific for Woking, but he looks like he's got something about him. He broke down the right channel and drove in a powerful shot, which Dunn did well to parry away. The second half started extremely encouragingly for Wrexham, and quite frankly, for the first half hour of it, there was only one team in it. Wrexham completely in control, pummeling Woking, and maybe this is the passage of play which frustrates me most. Kelly and Wedgbury continue to run the match. Rutherford was looking sharp down the right-hand side. Devadix will have wanted to be more cutting and more involved maybe than he was and again the two strikers looking threatening with Roberts and Carrington supporting well on the flanks and we just dominated the game completely and should have put the game to bed there was an opportunity 10 minutes into the half Baxter for the first and not the last time in the second half denying Wrexham a corner cleared Kelly attacked it and from 20 yards drove a great strike towards the top left corner but Baxter was there brilliantly to palm it away then Rutherford swinging in a free kick from midfield, Pearson getting up around the penalty spot and planting a header down towards the bottom right corner. Again, a good stop by Baxter. It spanned loose. Raven looked like he was going to score from two yards out. Baxter did brilliantly to spring back up to his feet and parry at the centre-back's feet. But from the resulting corner, Wrexham did take the lead. The corner swung in, was cleared back out to Kelly on the right-hand side. He ripped in a vicious cross, heading towards the far post. The keeper couldn't commit, he was unsighted, and when he did see it, he made a hash of it for once, swinging his hands at it, missing it, and Kelly's cross went steep into the top left corner. Ironic, really, that Wrexham, despite dominating and making chances, would only hit the net through a fluke and an own goal. But they kept pushing on, and for another 15 minutes were completely in control. Kelly again, having a goal from outside the box. Another tip over, this one an easier save, as it was directly over his head, but still hit viciously. Then, a free kick, just right of centre, uh, on the edge of the area. Kelly again denied by Baxter. He drove it through a crowded penalty area. Baxter must have seen it very late. Keep aside, admittedly, but managed to get down to his right and push it away. Quigley drove in the rebound, but his shot was blocked. And then another opportunity, Quigley picking it up and playing a good through ball. Holroyd one on one with the keeper, but Baxter once again would be excellent. He was terrifically quick off his line, and as a result, Quigley didn't have much scope to get the ball beyond him. The ball saved with his legs. And so it was that Wrexham looked completely in control, but Woking made a couple of substitutions, brought on a more progressive right back, brought on Saliba, who's a good creative midfielder, started to get the ball up to Theophanus and Gregor Cox a bit more accurately, a bit more directly, and all of a sudden, the game completely switched around. Woking suddenly hauled themselves back into it, a game which, frankly, they should have been out of already. There was a hugely controversial moment which eventually led to the second one. Well, was I say controversial? Just an absolute stinker of a refereeing decision. The ball played long. Gregor Cox up against Marcus Kelly blatantly fouled him. I mean, it was so obvious. Two-handed shove in the chest of Kelly, who recoiled back a couple of stacks. Astonishingly, the foul wasn't given. Gregor Cox continued and hit a fabulous shot from 25 yards, which arced beyond Dunn, heading for the top left corner, hit the inside of the post and dropped down into the goal move and eventually was scrambled away for a corner. And that corner led to the equaliser. Swung beyond the far post, Dunn, who throughout had been penned in from corners, and I think was, to be fair to him, trying to get out and, and attack things, came to attack it, but he was never really going to get there. Found himself stranded. And there was Joey Jones. Yeah, Joey Jones scoring against Wrexham. I feel so wrong as well. Getting up, planting a header over the keeper and into the unguarded net. And Woking had got themselves back level into a match which they should have lost, and which after this, they pushed on, trying to get a winner. Two minutes before the end, Gregor Cox 
again feeding Theophanus down the right channel. He drove a powerful shot, which took a nasty bounce in front of Dunn, hit him in the face and span behind for a corner. A bit of a let-off for Wrexham. And then in the second minute of added time, well, quite frankly, the referee's second stinker. And don't accuse me of bias, just as the equaliser shouldn't have come because the referee made a mistake. Quite frankly, this was a decision in the other direction. A long ball played forward. Gregor Cox got beyond Pierce and the last defender into the box and Pearson fouled him. No two ways about it. It was a penalty. Penalty and a red card because Pearson pulled his shirt rather than trip him. It was just blatant. The referee was struggling to keep up, perhaps. The linesman was on the correct side of the pitch. There was nothing impeding his view. And astonishingly, between the two of them, they managed to fail to give a penalty. Amazing let-off for Wrexham. And <laughs> Wrexham could have profited, should have profited, because in the fourth minute of added time, Rutherford swinging across to the far post. Simon Ainge, on as a late sub again, got up well, planted a header to the edge of the six-yard box, and there was Scott Bowden, fellow set, uh, substitute, a great opportunity, but he volleyed it over the bar. A huge frustration for Wrexham. These are two points dropped without question. A victory would have put Wrexham third and five points behind Macclesfield, breathing down their necks and making sure the title race is still alive. As it is, well, frustration. To hear more my analysis of the match, here's what Paul Jones and myself thought of the game on Callan FM. As the referee has blown for full time, oh, Wrexham will feel deflated about that. They Drop down at the moment a fifth in the table. Of course, some teams will be going on. But what a huge frustration for Wrexham. They, they, they had this game won. I mean, let's be honest, Paul. And end up sharing the spoils. And in fact, having to cling on a little bit at the end to make sure it wasn't a defeat. I really don't know what went wrong there. Yeah. Because the same players who had been doing so well are controlling it all of a sudden it all started to go peak tong as they say and I think frankly it's down to the substitution quickly going off because bringing Bowden on yes that's fine but Quigley is a big target man he's got more pace than the other two so the defenders would have to keep an eye on him stand off a bit and suddenly they had a bit more time at the same time we seemed to lose control of midfield we had been winning all the second balls mm. and all of a sudden they were falling to Woking and you do have to wonder how much we've also missed Manny Smith today with the defending of two yeah. set pieces it's nasty scenes on the sides of the pitch the fourth official first Gregor Cox went over and from 10 yards away was like gesticulating and shouting really wild eyed at him but then a number of walking players converged on him and had to be dragged away basically from the fourth official uh, it was hardly the best placed official to make that decision quite frankly no but that was a, a big turning point wasn't it, it I mean was. Wrexham unhappy because Woking's second goal came after a blatant foul on Marcus Kelly but then by the same token blatant penalty and to Woking in the 92nd minute and it should have been a red card to Sean Pearson too yes, so I guess the referee what he gives with one hand he takes away with the other well yes but I'm quite sure the fourth official would have given the penalty even from where he was standing because yeah. we were giving it from up from here and it was because Pearson you know was being done for pace yeah. breaking into the box would have been one on one on the keeper um, and he had to do what he had to do and when you look at the way the other results are going today Maidstone beat Sutton, Dover have beaten Macclesfield, uh, Hartlepool have brought it back to 3-3 against Fylde, which <laughs> helps to take a bit of the pressure off underneath. Um, once again, it's sort of a point dropped here. Um, and it may well be draw, you know, draws which are coming back to bite us. Chester is still drawing against Aldershot as well. It looks like the only top team who's won is Boreham Wood. Um, and we, of course, would have been above them um, if we had won. Every other result had gone our way so far today. It's deflating, I think, this, isn't it, really? Because we had such control of it. Now, there were positives. There may be better a point to ask you about the man of the match and we look at some of the positive performances around them positive performances around them um, Raven's not a centre back but I think he did as well as one could hope placed in there I was really impressed with Carrington at left back today not just his defensive duties uh, but when he sort of moved in played sort of moved up into midfield occasionally he did well there he put in some decent balls um, he'll be my pick for man of the match closely followed by 
uh, halloumi Sam, so to speak, who was covering every blade of grass again. Um, Quigley was a bit quieter today. Um, the whole ride certainly was winning headers. He really shouldn't have won and was putting himself around. Um, but the big disappointment was Nicky, Nicky Devedix. Um, wasn't good in loose play and wasn't good as far as delivery of the ball and I think both of us were expecting him to be the first substitution made and sort of looked at each other in surprise when Quiggs was taken off uh, because until that time we still didn't look like conceding a goal and suddenly it's almost as if that out ball has gone um, Devedix by that stage was a passenger in midfield as far as, I was, as far as I could see and we were overrun and then suddenly we were hanging on mm, absolutely um, another player I thought did well Robertson well right back and, yeah. and Kelly in midfield as well and I've got to say you suggested Wright coming on at one all in order to give us a bit more drive going forwards but I think certainly once it went to one and working game back at us the idea of Kelly going on in Deva Dix's wide left position and right in the middle I think would have given us a lot more solidity oh, yes. Yes. yes yes certainly Be, uh, because we just didn't win any second balls then all of a sudden um we uh, Sam Wedgbury wasn't quite at the races when when you know the first header was uh, was was lost and that enabled them to put us under pressure uh, I mean there is no getting away from though despite the fact that all of a sudden we lost the control the Woking girl came from a quite blatant foul on Kelly which in the end um, had to be run out for a, a corner um, and from that we conceded mm. frustration for Rex and we led but we didn't close it out this is the final whistle podcast for the Rex AFC media team